and greetings friends and welcome to let's make a 2d arcade fighter part 15 in this video we're going to go over how to make a character select screen although we don't have any new characters just yet this is going to be a very useful piece of logic and i want to get it waxed and sorted so that when we add in new characters they can literally just slot in very easily alrighty friends without further ado let's get stuck in okay sweet friends so here we've got our lovely screen well, uh, I'm just going to say that this is trash. We're going to turn around and not actually deal with that really much at all in this video. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is make our character select screen. And I'm just going to start with a little cube. Uh, just a note is that you can actually make this in an entirely different... Uh, you can make it in an entirely different scene. So it's kind of like you have your character select screen. And then that leads to the like actual fighting game dream, um, for example. The fighting game scene. Um, but I'm going to keep it inside the scene for now. I don't think the logic cost is going to be too hectic. Um, but if, if in the event that you have like 50 characters and you need every piece of like logic and thermo that you can, then maybe make the character select in the menu like a completely different scene. Anywho, let's get stuck in. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Make it quite nice. Nice and big. I'm just going to extend it a ways to the side as well. And then I'm going to put down maybe a little camera. As I say, this is going to be our character select screen so we can sort of zoom in nicely. Okay, sweet. I might make it, uh, I might make it black just so that it's sort of like a nice, uh, we've got a nice sort of background that's quite clear. And now, friends, what I'm going to do is actually just um, do a little bit of a design for the little character, the little characters like icons that we can select. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to go into modes, paint mode, tools, I'm going to go ruler, or rule flex, sorry. Guides, I'm going to go grid snap. And then I'm going to choose, let's say white, because that contrasts quite nicely. And then I'm just going to like draw a little, draw a little square, just like that. And this little square is going to be like our little character select, uh, like icon square. So the little character's face will be in there. One thing I'm going to do just for my own sanity is, you can see every time I'm going over this, the sort of whole square is lighting up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go tools, I'm going to go freeze, and I'm going to freeze this cube. So now I can look at this guy more easily and control him without having to worry about accidentally tapping on this dude. Okay, sweet. So now I've got a little cube. I think I'll make four of them. And I'm going to space them in such a way maybe make it one eighth I'm gonna space them in such a way that they are maybe one sixteenth yeah that looks cool I'm gonna space them in such a way that they and now I can go back up to one no I'm wrong okay let's go back to one sixteenth I'm gonna space them in such a way that they're touching but not overlapping because they're gonna change colors when they're being selected so touching, let's see, this one a little bit over. Touching but not overlapping. So overlapping would be like this. Overlapping would be like that. You can have it like that, that's just my preference. Okay, sweet. So now the next thing I'm going to want to do is actually get a little bit creative and draw like a little character icon. So now for my character icon, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into paint mode and make sure I've got my grid snap on. I don't have to have rule flex, I can have draw flex, you know, just have a bit of fun. And I'm going to draw like a funny face with this dude, just like... Got a nice face going here. I'll give him like a nice frown. That's really nice. Okay, sweet. Whoops, let's get the same red here. He's got his neck. He's got his shoulders. And he's got his angry fist. He's he's ready for this fight. He's ready for it. Okay, sweet. So now we've got a little dude over here. That's very nice. Next thing I'm going to do is just make a copy because I'm going to keep it simple for now. Make a few different copies uh, of this guy. So now I'm going to change the color of this. These are pretty much just stand-ins for now, friends. So this guy will be the yellow one and this guy will be the kind of uh, the blue one and then this guy can be what shall we say shall we say 
like the purplish one purplish one okay sweet so now we have four characters uh, icons that we can choose and they as you can tell they're very uh, impressive but really you can uh, you can make all sorts of things for these to be like fitting in these are as I say just sort of placeholders for the moment so that we can see how our logic works and you could for example do like a whole crazy painting for each of your characters you could do a version where um, you actually have like a little uh, sculpt like a little puppet's head or something and it's over here and it's all 3d and looks cool i really leave that up to your own creativity guys and i hope you have fun with that um yeah at the moment we've got kind of like a the rough edging of our little thing of our like icon and then our cool little character's head make sure that these are each separate paintings so you sort of paint one and then copy it a bunch of times so that when we select one it'll be able to light up and get colorful and that's what we're going to do right now so we're going to go into gadgets logic and processing get ourselves a microchip and we'll just whoops we can actually turn off this grid snap quickly we don't need that for now so get that microchip and ah oh, sorry you can't paste it on here because i've frozen it so you can unfreeze this guy for now then we can go gadgets microchip third time's the charm and i'm going to call this microchip character select screen okay sweet so in character select screen i'm going to put down a microchip and it's going to be p1 and this will be player one's sort of character select screen we're going to go to sensors and input get ourselves a controller sensor we can delete these extra wires we're not going to need those then we're going to go into the tweak menu important properties remote controllable and this is going to be player one so we can deselect all the other ones then we want a system that will allow us to sort of select the various characters that we've got and sort of like switch between them you know what i mean so what we're going to do for that is we're going to go get ourselves a keyframe and then we're going to select all of our select all of our dudes over here then we're going to go l1 and square once we've selected them all we're going to go 200 percent on the tint amount and then we can choose like mm, maybe we want our player one to be blue or something like that and then we've got like a nice blue color or maybe we want them to be green or maybe we want them to be red or whatever i'm gonna make player one blue all righty and actually i'm gonna also quickly just throw in a smack of light so that we can see a little bit better what's going on over here so i'll put it fairly central I'll go into the tweak menu and set it to diffuse set the color to white reduce the brightness so it's not too hectic and there we are i'm also going to maybe line this guy up a little bit better all righty that looks that looks pretty good maybe a little bit out all righty so just aligning the camera there now let's get back to it so this keyframe highlights them all so we're going to make four copies of this one for each little dude we can also name these all character highlight lovely okay sweet so then we're going to go for this character highlight we're going to go into this first one and deanimate these three over here okay sweet then go into this one deanimate all these except for the second one and the reason why we do this the reason why we get one keyframe and um make all the characters or sort of do all the things at once is so that they're all the same color because it can be quite tricky if you make a new keyframe and then you try to get the exact same color on the color wheel it can be a little bit tricky so this is just a way to sort of get around that and then the way that we're going to make this work so that as we sort of press a button it'll switch from one to the other the way that we'll do that is we'll go gadgets logic and processing get ourselves a selector a will be connected to this one b to this one c to this one and d to that one so a b c and d will be each of our little dudes over there okay sweet and the way that we switch between them is we're going to go to page two oh no sorry page three and when we press right on the d-pad it's going to go to the next output and when we press left 
It's gonna go to the previous one. Okay, sweet, let's give it a quick test. Oh, whoopsie. One of the things we're gonna actually have to do is quickly turn this off and give ourselves a new switch. And for the switch, we're going to go and just put it down over there, connect it to this guy, and we should be winning. Okay, sweet. So now when I press right, we're going to the right. When I press left, we're going to the left. And that looks pretty cool, friends. So that's the sort of uh, quite a simple part. Now, in order to make this also like nice and uh, like arcade authentic, I'm going to add in a little text displayer that asks the player to press like the start button or whatever it might be. You know, you know, like when you join in a in a 2D arcade fighter or in, in a lot of arcade fighters. Um, it'll say like player one, press the start button to join. Player two, press the start button to join. And that would sort of like turn that controller on sort of a thing. So I want to do something like that. And the way that I'll do it is I put down a little text displayer. I'm going to say player one. Press player one, sorry press and now we can't actually use the the start of the options button because that is sort of a dedicated button in dreams but i'm going to go touchpad press between the angle brackets so player one press the touchpad to join okay sweet then i'm going to get rid of the border and the background and the shadow i'll maybe I'll maybe just adjust the size of it. I'll make the text white so it stands out against the background nicely. And then we'll put it over here. We can also align it to the left. So now if we have a look, player one, press the touchpad to join. Okay, sweet. And that's gonna be on. And now in order to get that touchpad um, sort of activation working, we're gonna go into gadgets logic and processing and get ourselves two things the first is going to be a signal manipulator put it down over there and the next will be a node now we'll go into the node and make it a no port node so that we don't have any extra wires over there then we're going to go over here you don't actually need this node this is just for sort of neatness then we're going to go here and we're going to go okay cool where's the touchpad press that's in page two we'll connect it to the signal manipulator then we'll go into it Custom remapper, toggle output it on. So in other words, it's kind of like that makes it a switch. So when you press it, it'll be on. When you press it again, it'll be off. It's not just a pulse or a constant signal, but kind of like an on and off or a toggle as it sort of says. Connect that to the node and then use that to power the selector. So needless to say, you don't actually need this node. This is kind of just for if you want things to be uh, kind of neat and a bit organized. And something else is we're actually going to copy this guy. And it's going to say, select your character. So in other words, once you've pressed the touchpad, select your character. Okay, sweet. So by default, this will be off. Then we'll add in a little keyframe over here. And this keyframe will turn this guy on and this guy off. Okay, sweetie. Now, okay, sweet. Now that that is working like that, we can also name this um, text swap. Okay, sweet. So when this is active, it's going to turn that off and turn this on. So let's give it a bit of a test. Oh, what? Okay, cool. Press the touchpad to join, and now I'm here. It says select your character, and I can go around and select my character. If I press the touchpad again, then I'll sort of leave, you know, I'll disconnect. Okay, sweet. That looks cool. Lovely. So this is the basics of um, how we're going to sort of work with the design of it. I'm also just going to quickly turn off this game logic here because the interface is getting a little bit in the way don't worry if you see the health bars so for example you can still see the health bars in the top left and top right those are actually part of the characters themselves so if those are showing up don't worry once we omit the characters then it won't show those health bars until they actually spawn okay sweet so now the next thing that we're going to do is make it so that when you've selected your character, there's going to be a sort of like a picture on the side that's like, oh, cool, you've chosen your character and it's going to be like a cool little little painting, which I'm going to do right now. Yo, guys, what a treat. 
practicing my uh, painting skills. Sure, I can. I don't know about a treat, but uh, yeah. Okay, sweet. Let's just go for it. So we've got our cool guy over here. He means business. He's here to kick some butt. They disgraced his village. Okay, sweet. And then I'm gonna go like sweet. Give him some some mean looking eyes. He's ready for a fight. You know what I mean? Okay, sweet. Wow, horrible. Absolutely terrible. Just gonna put that over here about. And this will be a character. You can put their name here so this guy can be like Mr. Red or whatever, you know what I mean? Okay, sweet. Um so by default this guy's gonna be off. Um we can make it so that just sort of going on the character itself, in other words, just sort of highlighting the character will make this guy show up. We can totally make that happen. So we'll go here and we'll go visibility is turned on. Okay, sweet. Then for this next guy, we'll be like, okay, sweet. I want this guy's visibility to be turned on, visibility to be turned on. Um, and then I want his color to be, okay, 43. So we're going to hue cycle here and we go 43. Okay, sweet. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking what was, what was the hue cycle color of this guy. So this guy was also red in the beginning, but then I just went on the hue cycle and changed it. So now I'm going into this keyframe, making this guy visible and making the hue cycle so that it looks kind of similar. Okay, sweet. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. It's also going to make this guy visible and then on the hue cycle his number is 191 so i'm going to go 191 okay sweet sweetness and then finally for this dude we're going to go here 100 percent look at his numbers and he's 321 so he's far down there 321 okay sweet so now I'm going in and now when I look at the various characters it will show me like a cool character on the side. Whoa. You can make it so that that actually only shows up um, when you've selected your character. So for example, let's have a look see here. We could make it so that we could also make it so that this text just isn't here. So that could just not be there and then it'll be like, okay, sweet, press one to join and then oh. Now you're selecting your character. Well, otherwise, otherwise, we can keep it here, but just make it a little bit lower down. So it's like, bam, now you select your character. Okay, that looks cool. That looks really nice. Alrighty, friends. So here we've got like our little character select screen and we've got the player one's left side working quite nicely. Okay, sweet. On to the next uh, order of business. Okay, friends, so now the next order of business is actually spawning these dudes into our scenes. Let's just align this here quickly. Also want to just make this light a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. Let's have a look. Make that a little bit more lit up. Okay, cool. That looks nice. Oh, actually, something else. If you, uh, if you don't want, if you want to make sure that this camera isn't showing uh, imps, you can make sure you go here and go hide imps. So when you go on here, you aren't seeing your imp sort of flying around. Okay, sweet. Just a little little touch up there. Okay, sweet. But now let's get to actually emitting these bad boys into the scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a node just like this one. We can in fact copy it. Controller sensor. Grab the X or the cross button. I've always called it X, but whatever you prefer. Then we're going to go gadgets and get ourselves four AND gates. One for each character slash character icon and we're gonna make it so that um, when so each of these uh, ports a b c and d are going to connect to the a ports of a um, and gate respectively so this one goes to that a port this one goes to this a port they each get their own little and gate and in all of their B ports, we're going to put an X. So press L1 and then R2. We can make a bunch of wires come out of that node over there. So now, in other words, what happens is when the particular character is highlighted and we press X, 
it's going to do something. And that thing that it's going to do is ultimately emit something. But for now, let's just do a test it to see if it works. I'm going to do a little piece of texture. And it's going to say, it's going to power this and it's going to say, emit. Just to show you that it guys works. Show you guys that it works. Okay, cool. So ch 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 emit. So now we know that it works and it's going to emit that guy. Also, it looks like I'm beating the dude up actually in real time. Okay, sweet. So now we know that that works. Now the next stage, dum dum dum, is actually going to be <gasps> deleting these old dudes and emitting them. But guys, we actually have to make a key uh, uh, change here quickly. So originally, in the in the olden days, we used this little keyframe over here to change the value of this variable. Um, we're actually going to have to say farewell to this keyframe, um, or we can actually just put it to one side, and we're going to have to add in a little variable modifier and this variable modifier is going to be set to play a number operation type is set and it's going to set it to number two when it detects this player to spawn that's just the way it works uh, for some reason if you emit a guy and it's just this keyframe it wasn't working but if i was emitting him and i had this variable modifier uh, then it was working so that's a little bit of outdated uh, logic there you can, if you like, delete this entirely because all of our other logic is here. But if you, yeah, that's up to you. Okay, sweet. So now, that, that's just for when we've got our optimizing for player 2. But now let us get into actually emitting our player 1. Okay, friends. So to illustrate this point, we're actually going to need some uh, extra characters. So... The only the way that I'm going to make extra characters and we'll go into more depth about this in uh, future videos But what you're going to do is you're basically just going to make a copy and We can be like okay cool. This is the red guy. So I'm just going to go to this guy and give him a bit of a red head Okay, cool this guy's got a red head. So I'm gonna go to this guy. I think he was yellow. So he's gonna have a yellow head Okay, sweet. So now we've got uh, red head and yellow head, these dudes over here. And I'm not going to make uh, all four. I'm just going to do these two just to demonstrate. Uh, and then once we actually have multiple characters uh, in a future video, then uh, we can sort of go about uh, doing that sort of business. But this is really just to illustrate the use of the logic. Okay, sweet. So we'll put down an emitter. We can turn off the grid snap. Uh, in this emitter, we're going to go emit speed zero. Emit mode just once. They're going to be here for forever and max emitted. Ah, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, sweet. Object to emit is going to be Monsieur Red over here. Very lovely. And we'll connect it to this. And as for the position where he's going to be emitted, you don't have to make a single change because he's just going to be where he was by default. Then we're going to copy this emitter. We can actually rename it. We can say spawn red or whatever you'd like. I'll just call it spawn. Okay, sweet. Then we'll go over here. Maybe do it next to it. And for this guy, we're not going to have Mr. Red, but Mr. Yellow. And what's cool about it is if you make a copy of that emitter, it'll put it in the exact same position that this guy was. So it's perfectly lined up and everything. How lovely. Okay, sweet, but now let's, you know, put it to the test. So we go here. And it looks like the health bar is there. And if I go back, I'll see that he's actually there. It's a little bit tricky to see because he's uh, emitted. And when things are emitted and you pause, then they kind of uh, only count as sort of semi-existing objects. So one thing, one other thing we're going to do is actually um, just put down a little, a little timeline here. And in this timeline, sorry, not a timeline, but a keyframe, it's going to turn off this camera and turn on uh, this one. So we'll just quickly connect that to here. This isn't a permanent thing. We're going to, the real uh, solution to starting the game is going to be more elegant. This is just to uh, illustrate. So here we are. We're going to be red or yellow. Let's be yellow this time. And we'll need to make that keep changes. Mean lad is the best at making videos. Okay, sweet. And here we are. We've got our yellow dude. Wow, take this, you loser. 
take this. Um, and something else we're going to want to do, of course, is to turn on the game logic. So that includes our timers and all that sort of stuff, energy bars. Let's do one more try. Red, and here we've got our energy and so on. Take this. Okay, cool. So, friends, that's working swimmingly, absolutely swimmingly. And uh, I'm not going to do all four, as I said, but that is how you do it. So, essentially, what do we have here? We have a means by which to control our particular character screen. It has to be turned on when we press the touchpad. When it presses the touchpad, it's going to be like uh, select your character, changing from press 1 to join or press touchpad to join. Then we've got our selector that will choose between our four little characters and character icons. We've got these AND gates that require the character to be highlighted or selected and for X to be pressed. So A is character selected, B is press X, and then it will emit or it will spawn our particular characters. Okay, sweet friends, and that's really all there is to it. Now let us um, actually get around to changing uh, what it's like for uh, it's player two. In other words, what changes do we have to make to get this work for our player two? Well, let's get stuck in with it. So for player two, there isn't anything too crazy. We're just going to copy this just as is, and we're going to rename it. We're going to rename a few things. So player two, we're going to go into controller sensor, important properties, not player one, but player two. Very nice. Uh, then we're going to go to our text displayers, and at the moment they're on the left, but we want to make them on the right. And they'll line up very nicely. Um, and of course, we're going to rename it so that it's player 2. We'll change the text. Player 2, press this to join. Um, then we're going to actually delete these character highlight thingies, uh, keyframes. And we're going to select each of these guys. And we're going to make them a completely new color. So we're going to go 200% and we're going to go like, mm, I'm thinking maybe a nice red. That looks cool. So player two will be a lovely red. We'll make four copies of this just like before. And we'll go, okay, cool. So for player one, it's going to do just this guy. There we go. How lovely is that? For player two, it's going to do, or not sorry for player two, but for character two, it's just going to select the second character. For character three, it's just going to be the third character. Oh, and not the fourth one, of course. And for character four, it's going to be just the fourth one. And I'm pressing triangle to deanimate here. Sorry, I'm not telling you about every button I'm pressing. But yeah, so just deanimating those ones over there. Okay, sweet. So now, let us see if this is going to be working. Um, just We're not going to try and spawn them just yet. We just want to see that the, uh, the characters are showing up and being highlighted. Okay, sweet. Alrighty, let us give it a try. So player 2 presses the touchpad, and they are red. If player 1 does it, he's blue. They are blue. He, she, they. Okay, sweet. So here we are. We've also got, uh, if you see, so player one is blue, player two is red, and if they sort of select the same character, it does a little bit of a, a light purple uh, sort of arrangement. That doesn't require any fancy logic on my part. It's literally the Dreams uh, engine itself is saying, okay, this is between two keyframes. It's between red and blue. Um, and apparently that is kind of a gross puce. I would have thought it would be purple, but uh, I guess that's just me. I would want it to be kind of brighter, but uh, if you want to sort of be fancy and do that sort of thing, then you must go for it. But uh, one thing you'll notice, which is kind of annoying, is that our character on the left, is uh, his colors are not the best, and they're kind of mixing, and we don't have a dude actually on the right. So what we're going to do is make a copy of this dude, our sort of character display. Do a little swap there. Let's have a look. Cha-ching. Alrighty. And now, just what we've got to do is go to player one and sort of uh, just... Sorry, no. Player one, and we're just going to deanimate the player two business over there. This is a little bit tedious, and there's probably a way around this, but... Uh, this is, this is just some good, honest dreams, dreams uh, slog. Okay, cool. And then we're going to player two. And in player two, 
we're going to deanimate the player one sort of character display on the left here. So that it will be all good. And lovely. Okay, sweet. Let's give this another try. So player one, I'm pressing the touchpad. And now I can see my character. Player two, I'm pressing the touchpad. And now I can see his character. But it's not working. Lovely. 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 Okay. So for player two, it's not working. The reason why it isn't working is a mystery to me. Because it seems like it's should be. Oh, 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 I know what, why. Because I deleted the other ones and all copied them from here. So we're just going to have to do this again. Sorry about that, folks. So this was 43. 200%. Oh, no, sorry, not 200%. 43. Very nice. Then this guy was over here, and that was 191. Sorry about this, friends. If this isn't something you want to have in your game, you can just sort of skip ahead. So now, if we have a playthrough, we both press touchpad, we're both selecting the red dude. Now, player two is, looks like it's working. If we're both on the red guy, we're both on the yellow guy, we're both on the blue guy, both on the purple guy. If we're on different characters, it works. Wah! Okay, cool, friends. So that's really cool, because that is lining up quite nicely indeed. Um, and what's happening here is now we have a system that works and displays things quite uh, correctly and accurately. So that's very lovely. Now let's go to player two and make it so that we can actually omit a second character and see if that works. Woohoo! So friends, there's nothing fancy here. The most uh, tricky part about spawning player two is actually just positioning them. Um, so I'm just going to turn off uh, preview and visibility. And I'm just going to grab this make sure you've got your grid on you're actually gonna have to um, you can't actually press L3 to do a switch so you're gonna have to do it yourself and just do a bit of a spin around um, and sort of just judge where you want their position to be alrighty that looks pretty good okay all right and what's annoying is with the previous system you can just copy this and change the thing that's being omitted and it'll be fine but it's not going to work exactly the same we'll turn off preview visibility because now when we select our yellow dude he's going to be omitted in the same position but you'll see that he's facing the wrong direction as you can see over there so that's just one of the things that you have there so it sort of matches position but not orientation if that makes sense okay sweet so now Player 2 is going to be spawned over here. I want to make sure that he's in line. Okay, that looks pretty in line. Fabulous. Alrighty, so now we're going to connect that to B. And so that player 2 can spawn our little yellow dude. And we're actually going to delete this keyframe. And what does this keyframe do? You're like, oh, Minan, what's that again? Oh, this is the thing that turns off this camera and uh, sort of makes it so that this turns on and turns this camera on. But we're actually going to make another piece of logic that makes it so that when characters have been selected so when player one has selected the character and player two has selected the character it's going to be like alrighty time for a new challenger or whatever you know and it sort of uh, starts the starts the fight does a little countdown so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a little little counter and we're going to go okay cool player one when a character has been selected so we're going to just take a little node and we're going to connect this node to all of these. So in other words, whichever character you select, it's going to say, alrighty. And it's going to go, we're going to have our little node that's, that's poking out over there. Then we're going to put down another node over here, just in the exact same fashion. It's going to go here, here, and here. And then we're going to add in a good old-fashioned AND gate. So when... Player 1 is selected the character, and player 2 is selected the character. Then it's going to increase the count. And when it increases the count, it's going to say, um, put down a little timeline. It's going to be like, um, okay, <coughs> prepare your ears for some choice voice acting by Mean Lad. Okay, sound mode, tools, microphone, or oh, sorry, sound recorder. 
Get ready to fight. Woo! <laughs> Get ready to fight. Woo! Okay. That woo is terrible, so I'm just going to cut that out. Wait. Get ready to fight. That looks good. Um, you can add in some funky sounds and so on and so forth. Get ready to fight. That's going to be like... We can add in a little... Little countdown timer. Okay, friends, so now before we go too far down this rabbit hole, we're going to go into our player one and we're going to put down a little keyframe. And this keyframe is going to turn off our controller sensor. So in other words, once we've selected our character, we can't then select another one. Because we've got our character and it's been selected and we can't, we'll be like, select a character and, you know, it keeps moving around. We don't want that. So I'm going to connect that here. I'm going to call this one deactivate controller friends take the time to name your keyframes um it's really worth the effort because otherwise you'll come back and be like what the heck am i doing and you don't want that and we'll do the exact same for player two deactivate once our character has been selected slash spawned and we'll rename that keyframe as well okay sweet friends so now that is looking um pretty cool and actually, okay, before we get into this AND gate and counter system, we're going to go back to our player one because there's actually another fix that we've got to do. It's a little bug that I picked up. So remember earlier when I said that we need to do the uh, variable modifier player number? Well, that's trash. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it is trash and it doesn't actually work. Um, I actually had to sort of mess around with a few different systems, but I found one that actually does work in fact. So what we're going to do is... We're going to change around our player 2 system. So originally, when the player 2 spawn tag was detected, it used a keyframe to change the value of the player number variable. And that changed a bunch of things. And that system was cool for when we were just copying and pasting dudes in. But now that we're emitting them in, we need a system that works differently. Also, the variable modifier doesn't work, as I found out. I'm uh, very much uh, kind of stupid. Um, but it makes both characters either player 1 or player 2 because they share this variable because they're they um, emitted from the same character but essentially you don't need to, don't need to know why that doesn't work particularly because I have a system that does work we're gonna put down two nodes first one we're gonna make it a no port node and then just copy it then we're gonna put this one here and we're gonna go to each of these wires that are connected for the player one uh, calculator connect it here connect it here connect it there then we can delete this guy farewell then we're gonna get our other node which was all the player 2 stuff connect it here connect it here and connect it there farewell and goodbye to the player number variable as well you're thinking but mean lad bro we've had that for like multiple videos bro. what's going on here there's a whole change going on and you're totally right i'm going to put down a not gate when player 2 spawn is not detected you are player 1 when player 2 spawn is detected you are player two. Okay, friends, so in my eternal quest for self-improvement, I've actually discovered uh, another bug. So the reason that uh, this system over here uh, doesn't work is because these just send pulses. And we needed to send a constant signal, uh, but only for a moment. So what we're going to do is, let me not uh, sort of confuse you, let me just do it rather. What we're going to do is we're going to put down two counters. And it's going to be, has is player two spawn nearby? If it's not... Then it's going to increase the count and that will make it so that we're player one. If player two spawn is nearby, we're going to increase the count, constant signal, and make it player two. But now the secret is we also power this not gate uh, with our A selector so that only the not gate is powered for a very brief time. Because if we don't power this not gate for a brief time, then it's going to say, okay, he's player two. But then it's going to check, oh, this isn't powered anymore. So in other words, it's not detected. And now it's going to make us player one as well. So in other words, that'll break it. So we need a system that basically works like this. It checks, is player two spawn nearby? Yes, it is. We're player two. If not, and that not is only temporarily powered, then it's going to make us player one. So let us give it a check. That looks cool. That looks cool. We can tell because of the uh, the health bars at the top. Okay, sweet. 
So friends, uh, now I'm just going to quickly do it for our yellow dude over here and then we shall crack on. Sorry for all the bugs and the and the little glitches that I've been discovering, friends, but I feel like uh, it's best to be honest and tell you what isn't working and why. And yeah, so that we can give us uh, give ourselves a better idea of what actually developing games is like and all the challenges we face along the way. But enough of that, let's get on to the next section. Okay, friends, so that is sorted. Uh, also, another thing that I forgot to do is just make sure that our deactivate controller keyframes are, in fact, uh, oh, sorry, on keep changes. And then, one thing you're also going to notice is that when I press these buttons, this is once again only a pulse. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add in a little counter which really is the backbone of all logic and this counter is going to be like this connected to this node over here and then it will be connected to the A port. We can make this node a no port node. So in other words we look for our character, we select them, we press X, it spawns them, it deactivates our controller and it will say player one is ready. That's what this counter is saying. Is player one ready? Player one is in fact ready. Okay, sweet. Then we shall do the exact same over here. So we make it a little bit longer, put down a little counter, constant signal, make it a no port node and connect it to the B port over here. Now let's have a check. Well, no, it works if my funny voice acting comes on. Get ready to fight. Okay, cool. The camera did a little bit of a jig there. Um, I just put down a little keyframe. But uh, yeah, okay, cool. Let's put down a little keyframe. This keyframe will deactivate this guy. It will activate this guy. And it will turn on this logic. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, sweet. Uh, and it will be over here. We can make it kind of long. We don't have to make it long. You can also just make it keep changes. And we shall name this start. Or turn on UI, that sort of business. Okay, sweet. So now, I'm player one. I'm player two. We select our characters. I'm going with the... I'm going with the... Uh, who am I? I'm, I'm, Player two is going with the yellow guy. Player one's going with the blue guy. Get ready to fight. Okay, sweet. And there we go. Um, you might want to make it so that this dude, so as to not interrupt our intro sequences, because as you recall, we have our little intro run-ins. Um, what we'll do is we'll go here. We'll turn this on because this is we put this off in a few videos back. But now. Okay, cool. So that will be turned on. Another thing we're going to want to do actually with this guy is deactivate these dudes so that we don't show the, the like select your character stuff on the side here. And um, yeah, that should be good. So let us give it a bit of a try with uh, fingers crossed. Okay, cool. So we select our characters. Get ready to fight. You disgraced my village. You smell like feet. Round one. Fight. So now we can fight. I did notice though that our intro animations weren't playing. Which is a little bit strange. A little bit étrange. Okay, no worries friends. So all that we have to do in order to fix the, the animations not working is we're going to go into our meta. We're going to go to the second page, which is input and inputs and outputs. And by default, emit with wires is not selected. So we're going to emit with wires. But you're going to say, mean lad, why does that work, bro? Like the keyframes from the animation intro weren't working. And I'll be like, well, mate, it's because uh, keyframes are actually just uh, invisible wires. Uh, there's a bunch of invisible wires that actually come out of keyframes. So if you emit something without wires, then the keyframes outside of the particular puppet or the object won't work on them. So all we have to do is emit with wires. So we go to player one, emit with wires, and we'll go to player two, select them both, or all of them, and we'll go emit with wires. And now if we have a little bit of a run through, okay, player one joins, player two joins, I'll be the red guy, player two will be the yellow guy. Get ready to fight. 
You resemble a the butt. animations work. You're going down. Are ye? Round one. Fight. So happiness, friends. Happiness indeed. Uh, that is looking most lovely, most lovely. And if we want to, for example, make it so that um, the the uh, the health bars, because by default the health bars are showing up right away, but we don't want that. We'll just go over here and we'll go, okay, with our start logic, we'll make it so that health bars only actually turn on when the sort of start keyframe is over here. And we'll, of course, do that for both of our guys, for our uh, red guy and our yellow guy and all of our characters. And once again, friends, this is why um, it's important to make it make sure it makes that, that turn on sound. We'll turn this off. Make sure, make sure, make sure that you do all of your logic like I've tried to do before you add in more characters. And this is why I've tried to do more characters last. Because if I had four characters, if I had ten characters, I would have to make these changes to each and every one. And that's just, that's just really, really tedious. Okay, sweet. So let us give this a try. Hopefully this works. Player one joins, player two joins. I select, he selects. Get ready to fight. You resemble a butt. You disgraced my village. Round one. Fight. And friends, there you freaking have it. Wow. It's taken me a few hours to make this freaking video. Oh, rage. Rage. Take this. Uh, take this logic. That's what you get for not working first time. Hey oh, sorry. I missed it. Take this. K.O. Yeah. Okay, sweet. I needed, I just needed that. This is why we make fighting games, friends, so that when the logic is frustrating, we can uh, beat up a, a puppet. Um, okay, sweet friends. Uh, that is all there is to it. The tears are streaming down my cheeks as I finally completed this video and it's finally working. You can add in more characters. And actually in the, in the next video, I'm going to actually start, or maybe not the next video exactly, maybe the next few videos, I'm going to start showing you how to make your own characters and give them cool like appearances and stuff. Not just the stupid one dude's got a red head, the other guy's got a yellow head. Like there'll be different characters and they'll have like different attacks and all these sorts of things. And I'll show you guys how to go about doing that. But friends, this is how you add a character select screen. This was a Titanic video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Uh, it was a real tough one, but I'm glad that we got through it to the end. I'll give a brief uh, run over of the logic once again. So we have our controller sensor. By default, it'll say press uh, touchpad to join. Then um, wh what we're going to do is once you press the touchpad, it's going to activate the selector, which allows you to choose the character or highlight them, you know, sort of select them. Then you'll press X to confirm the character you want to do. It'll emit a character. Then it will say, OK, cool. Now that I've uh, chosen my character, it's going to deactivate the controller. Then it's going to add one to the counter. This is the player one ready count, in other words. Player two is exactly the same with a few tweaks uh, to like this, for example. We change the name of it. We make sure this is uh, player two uh, in the imp settings and all these things are the same, except, of course, for the position of the emitted, uh, the emitted dudes over there. Uh, it also deactivates the controller. Player two ready. If player one and player two are ready, then it's going to say, OK, cool, cool. We can start. It does, it does our little sound uh, narration there. Then with our start, it turns on the health bar. It turns off this camera. It turns on that camera and it turns on these game settings, that game logic. Uh, the few changes that we had to make to our particular dudes in summary was that uh, our player two uh, detection sort of logic wasn't working before. We had to add in a not gate that is powered by A as well as two timers. And rather than calculators working with a variable, uh, we added in some nodes because of course the variable is constant. So it would work for both characters and both of them would be player one or both of them would be player two. So this is the system that we had to go with uh, ultimately in the end. And yes. Friends, that was insane. That was truly intense. And I hope, friends, that it works for you and that you can apply it to your games. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And thank you for sticking around with me until the end. Alrighty. Peace out, friends, and catch you in the next video. Catch in the flip-flop, friends. Peace out. Hey, friends, just before we go, I wanted to let you know about the Mean Knights. So I've just relaunched my Patreon page, and the Mean Knights are the names I give my Patreon patrons. 
Friends, if you want to find a way to best support your boy Mean Lad, that would be the best way for me. So the way it works is there are four tiers, each of them with various benefits. Every person who joins is going to get creds, they're going to get shout outs in the YouTube videos and your very own Pixel Night, which will appear on the homepage mural on my Patreon page. Abababam. Not only that, but with the higher tiers, you're also going to get some behind the scenes content. Ooh, some bonus content. Ooh, and all sorts of other benefits. Ooh. So friends, if you really want to help your boy Mean Lad and help me keep making these sort of videos and so on and so forth, that would be super helpful. Of course, at the same time, watching my videos, subscribing, liking, those things are also super, super helpful. So friends, anything you can manage, whether it's watching videos or, you know, buying your boy a, a, some toast, all of these things help. Thank you so much, friends. And actually, one thing I want to say is that I have one patron so far already. Woohoo! And I want to give a shout out to my boy, Salt Levels Max, who is my very first Patreon patron, the very first Mean Knight. And because he is one of the first Mean Knights, he is going to get uh, not the normal knight armor, but the special edition, limited edition, early days knight armor. Woohoo! Which I'll show you over here. Bye bye. So. What's cool about this is, you know, he gets some, some bragging rights, as it were. He gets to support your boy, and he's one of the first. He is the first. If you want to be some of the first and get this, this cool armor and see it on the homepage mural, then, yeah, get stuck in, friends. Hope to hear from you soon. Peace out!